Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself. And uh, we're just blessed that you can, you can join us for this time. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, we've been doing this program now for just over four months. And I think it's been pretty evident what we, we've shown how... There is so much in Christianity today that doesn't resemble a biblical faith mm. that has come and has roots going back to, to Babylon. I mean, literally to, right. to ancient Babylon. And I was going to say, and it's moved on. It's, I was going to say it evolved, but actually it didn't evolve. It devolved. Uh, it the, changed adversely. Yeah, but it, it devolved yeah, in the sense that, evolved. think about it, the, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream that represented the four kingdoms that flow through time, mm -hmm. from Babylon to Persia to Greece and down to Rome. That's the point. It's going down. Yes, right. And at the mm -hmm. end, it's iron and clay, and it's crumbling. Okay. It can't stand. The calling of God in our lives is an upward calling. Amen. Since Adam sinned and fell away, the world, which has been polluted by sin, as it says in Isaiah, is on a downward spiral, headed towards an end, while we are headed upwards to that calling, to that great calling of God in our lives. Tonight, or today, in this, in this program, what I'd like to look at is how the church itself, or the people of God, remember I, I said this in the beginning, and test this by asking the Father about it. Jesus Christ was not sent into the world, did not come into the world, to start a new religion. Yeah. He came in to restore an old relationship Amen. with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why he sent his, his son, the promised Messiah of Israel. We're going to look at how the effect, the, the people of God, you know, they were a family, and it was supposed to be a family affair, right? We, yes. we are the family of God. There's a, there's a great hymn, We Are the Family of God. But they became a people. Out of the horror of the bondage in Egypt that it was in the time of Moses, mm -hmm. God brought them out as a people, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at that in this program and see how they started out, Okay. We ended the last program last week by talking about the fact that Alice mentioned that the scriptures say that when Jesus returns, the question is, will he find faith? Not will he find big churches, not will he find lots of Christians running around doing this or that. What he will look for, and remember, he searches the heart. He will look for faith. And faith resides in the heart. Yes. With the heart man believes, it says in Romans, okay? The last picture of a church in the scriptures is the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And that is a congregation of people who would call themselves believers. But the fact is, they're boasting in their riches and their wealth, something we talked a lot about in the last couple yes. of programs, right? Mm -hmm. While they were absolutely blind to what they lacked. Right. And what they lacked was Jesus Christ, who stood outside while they were inside. And that, that congregation literally made Jesus sick to his stomach. Yes. Okay? He said, I would vomit you out of my mouth. So, listen to this verse. I want to start here in this program. In Luke 18, verses 7 and 8. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? That's where that scripture is, right? right. Will he find faith? Remember that Paul speaks of us, the true believers, and says, we walk by faith, for we walk by faith and not by sight. 
The we there is the sons and daughters, the children of God, led by the Spirit of God, those who have been made right with the Father, righteous, by the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And then, in Hebrews it says, But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Anything not done in faith is sin. Okay? So I want to go back to one of the most amazing, amazing events in the history of the people of God, and that is the Red Sea. Okay? Okay. I mean, you talk about the demonstration. This is that, that part of the Passover that the people of God were called to celebrate through all eternity, through all generations, right? When God delivered them by his mighty hand out of the power of Egypt, out of the bondage of Egypt, out of death, through the, the parted Red Sea and into the Promised Land, right? I'm going to read that account, right? In Exodus 14, starting in verse 10. As, now remember, God has led the people. Moses went into the land, and you know, brought the plagues on Egypt until Pharaoh was compelled to let the people go. And God leads them down to the Red Sea. Pillar of fire by night, a cloud right by day, right? Yes. And in Exodus 14, it says, As Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. When, the, when things got rough, and trust me, you're not, you're not going to have many encounters of anything in your life that's going to be as perilous appearing a situation as that. They, they, and, but remember, it is the Lord that led them right to this spot. They are confronted, they're at the Red Sea, an impassable, impossible body of water. Right? Who built the Red Sea? God. God. He called it into existence. And this is where he led them, to a place where there was no human way to deal with it. So they're doing this, and now they hear the army of the Pharaoh coming down on top of them. Right? And they panic, and they mumble, they groan, they complain. Think about these words of Jesus when he told the parable, parable of the sower and the seed in Matthew 13. He said, the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. They cried out to the Lord. Not in faith, not trusting him. They cried out in fear. So then, Moses says, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. Mm -hmm. Exodus 14, 13. Got that? Yes. Moses says, Stand by and see the salvation of God. Now that's followed quickly by, The sons of Israel walked on dry land through the midst of the sea. And the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Right? Still in Exodus 14. The Lord parted the Red Sea and delivered his people. As I said, that's one of the most famous events in all of human history. When they got to the other side, it says in Exodus 15, Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will extol him. 
Sounds good, right? Yeah. They sang and they danced and they had a jubilee. Except a few chapters later. Well, no, it was on the wrong before side. you get there, it was on the wrong side. You see, they were grumbling and complaining on the other side yes. where the problem was. Yes. They weren't praising him on, on that side. They weren't singing a new they song. They weren't giving then. thanks. They weren't singing a new song then. That's, when they should That's why Moses, because they had no faith. faith. Although they had heard the word of God and seen his mighty hand. Right? So Moses says, stand by and see the salvation. So they had to no, see it no faith. before they would believe. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that the church of God, the people of God, those who walk by faith need to rejoice, celebrate, sing songs of praise in the, on the other side of the Red Sea. In the midst of the peril. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. That, I say that. I want to give you God's commentary. Mm -hmm. Okay? Listen to God's commentary on that event. I'm going to read to you from Psalm 106. I'm going to start at verse 7. This is the Word of God. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember your abundant kindness, but rebelled by the sea, at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for the sake of his name, that he might make his power known. Thus he rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deeps, as through the wilderness. So he saved them from the hand of the one who hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The water covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. They quickly forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel, but craved intensely in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. That's what Mark was talking about. Yes. Yeah, they sang, they danced, they had a jubilee, they praised the Lord, but they were quick to forget it. Right. But the word of God, God's commentary is, he said that they rebelled at the Red Sea. Mm. That's what the mumbling and grumbling and complaining is. It's rebellion against God. They, God's people, delivered from, God, from bondage by God's mighty hand, saved from death by the blood of the Lamb on the lintel of the doorpost, stirred to action by the word of God through Moses, rebelled at the Red Sea. Their grumbling and complaining, their mumbling and murmuring, was a confession of their lack of faith. It was rebellion. It was witchcraft. It was idolatry. You don't believe that? Sure you do, because it's the Word of God. Samuel, 1 Samuel 15 says this, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed the, than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. It's amazing that people could celebrate the Red Sea. But they said they were celebrating God. But I don't see them falling on their faces and repenting of their rebellion on the Not other at side. At all, no. And because they did, you want to know something? They carried we all we all continue. fall short of the glory of God. I mean, we all miss the mark. Yes. Not you, Mark. That we, I mean, we all sin, right? There's That's no right. doubt about that. Absolutely. But if, if we sin and confess that sin, He is faithful. If we're faithful to confess that sin, He is faithful and just to forgive it. Yes. Do you know what this reminds me of? No. Uh, in the Gospels, people followed Jesus because of the food. And, and He said, you only follow me because of the food. Yes. Mm -hmm. They only praised Him because they survived. But, but, because yes. the, before they were complaining, they, they told Moses... We should have stayed. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. they also said, we told you so, when the army was coming upon them. On the other side, they were just thankful to, to get out alive. And it was a momentary thanks to God. And then they forgot about it. Right. That's exactly right. So, think about this. Everybody believes something. Yes. Absolutely. Everybody has beliefs, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Belief that is based on sight quickly fades. And remember this. You believe that God is one. You do well. Mm -hmm. so the demons also believe and shudder. Yes. 
James 2.19. Everybody believes something. Eve listened to the serpent and believed that she could make herself like God. That serpent, Satan, also believed he could make himself like the Most High. Simon the magician in the book of Acts believed that he could purchase the gifts of God. Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. and with name in the leper, yes. Elisha, believed that he could sell the gifts of God. That's right. Everybody believes something. Yes. The church today has a lot of beliefs that do not originate from God's mouth. If they don't originate, all spiritual things have two sources, God or Satan. If it's not from God, it's from Satan. And if it's from Satan, it's a lie. Of course it's a lie. And if, it's, and if you believe in that... I, you're going to fall. You, you, you have fallen. If you believe it, you have, okay? Okay. The name of this program is, and you, I, I don't know if you noticed it as the program starts, In Search of Christianity. Seeking biblical faith in these perilous last days. Yes. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people say they have faith. When what they have is a belief. Okay. And oftentimes that belief comes from what they've seen, what they've experienced. Faith, true faith, only comes from hearing the voice of God. Right. If you didn't hear God say it, you have no right to believe it. If you did hear God say it, you had better believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Think about that Red Sea. I, you know, I, I can remember, oh my gosh, 35, more than 35 years ago, I was preaching at a, at a place, and it just struck me as I was doing it. If the church today was at the Red Sea in the same kind of situation, mm -hmm. I honestly believe that the church today would fall into two camps. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I call it bridge building blessings and ferry boat faith. That's right. You see, the church today believes that it has power that originates from themselves and their ability to do things on their own. So they would say, well, let's build a bridge. Mm -hmm. And they would hire you know, somebody to draw a rendering the and get some people to start raising the funds to go out and buy trees. Yes. <laughs> Tell me I'm not telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah. That's the way the church acts today. Let's build a bridge. Let's do it ourselves. You know, I know something, even if they did it, it wouldn't be God. No. And if they had done it, well, you know what? The, the Egyptians would have come right across after them. That's right. Because God yeah. certainly wouldn't have taken care of them. And then the other camp is this, this what, they, what is called faith, which is a belief that is not sounded and grounded in the Word of God. There would be people getting down on their faces. Remember we talked about incantations, magic incantations, and they would be confessing a ferry boat. They would be bringing, oh, Lord, we're trusting you. Send the ferry boat. God, send the ferry boat now to carry us across the river. You know, even if he did send the ferry boat, the Egyptians would be on the next one across. Mm -hmm. His ways are still not higher. our ways. So and the church is doing things that, that are simply not based on having heard from God. That's right. We need to be prayerful about this. We need to consider it in these perilous last days. Because God's ways takes care of the entire situation. Absolutely. And it's the only thing that can. That's right. It's the only thing, because we talked about this last week, it's the only thing that has true power. That's right. Okay? You know, all of this, if you think about it, it should become clear why Aaron thought that, that his brother Moses' response would have been an acceptable, you know, his, that his, what he said to Moses would have been an acceptable excuse. Okay. When Moses came down the mountain right. from his encounter <clears throat> with an awesome God. He came down and the people of God were worshiping the golden calf, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Moses confronts his brother who he had left in with charge. the responsibility, right? And this is after this. Yeah. Chronologically, yeah, yeah, yeah. after they've seen this, yeah. they, they, oh, yeah. they, they, they do that. Yeah, but don't let me lose my point here. Now, okay. okay. So Aaron says to Moses, do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people yourself that they are prone to evil. Exodus 32, 22. You see, he thought that that would be a reasonable excuse. Excuses are the fiery arrow shot from the pits of hell to kill repentance. repentance. The Lord God, who knows every hair on your head, mm -hmm. knows the human condition. Yes, he does. Which is why he gave us instruction on what to do. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? Think about this. Watch and pray. After the Last Supper, Jesus has a supper. He goes out singing hymns and he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Taking a couple of the apostles with him. And it says in Matthew 26, I'm going to read from verse 37. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Not my will, but thy will be done. This is the answer to dealing with our situations, is to have that trust, that faith in God that you can say, that you, not my will, but whatever you want, Father, whatever you want. Because we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His birth. Because we trust in Him. We trust in His love for us. We have faith, okay? You know, interestingly, I, I just, uh, I was over, asked to visit and preach at a church here this uh, past, past recently. <clears throat> and the sermon I preached was based on a song, Just a Closer Walk mm -hmm. with Thee. And just listen to the words of this song a minute. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Think about the words of that old, old hymn. The desire, the plea of our hearts is a closer walk with the Lord. Not about stuff. Remember I said the faith is not about what you can get, okay? The faith that we have is to seek God's approval, to seek that closer relationship with Him, that closer walk. Lord, let it be. Dear Lord, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. It's a confession. I am weak, but thou art strong. You know, get away from your pride. Yes. Recognize the fact that it's a constant conflict between our flesh and our spirit, and we can't do it on our own. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, right? And the prayer is, Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied just as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. The way back for the church, the way back to reform, is not the rituals and the trappings of religion, but a heart after God. Amen. That's what we need. That's what the church has to have. A closer it's, walk. Well, and it comes from that relationship. It's not about getting dressed up nice and going to a building on Sunday. No. It's not about, it's not about, I'm telling you the truth. They're not, I, I don't say this, this is not condemnation, it's an observation. Yes. It's what I see as we you know, travel and spend time in churches. We need to get back to that place where all of this is about walking hand in hand with, with, with the Lord. Isn't that what was in the garden? Yeah. Isn't that what our desire is to get back to that place where yes. Adam was? Yes. Just about being, basking in the presence of God. This is the Word of God. Okay? Psalm 51. Mm. David, a man after God's own heart. David, the apple of God's eye. He said, For you do not delight in sacrifice. Otherwise, I would give it. You're not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. You know, we talk about that, that, that verse. Mm. If my people who are called by my name. It's us that need to get on our faces and repent. It's us that need to turn from our wicked ways. And it's not about God healing America or England or someone. It's about God healing us. Thank you. We need reform in the church. And that will start with repentance. We need to put aside the traditions of men and get back to the commandments of God. We need to get to that place we do. where it's not about what we believe. I believe if I go through all that switch, the light's going to come on. 
I don't believe that because God told me. It's because I've done it a thousand times. But I believe the things of God because I heard him say them to me. Faith has to arise in your heart. Faith has to come because you hear the voice of God. And you'll hear the voice of God if you take time to listen. Have a little talk with Jesus. You've got to spend time in conversation. Samuel, the prophet, as a child, had to learn to hear and discern the voice of God. Yes. We need to know the voice of God. I can't tell you. I mean, I have heard the voice of God so many times. I can't tell you. It's not always, hardly ever, a big boiming, booming voice out of the sky. It's that still, small voice. But I promise you, if you're listening, you will know that it is God speaking to you. I don't know what else to say other than that. The purpose of this program is to encourage us all to get back to that place where we are living the Sermon on the Mount. That we are, what we act, our, the actions of our life are based on the beliefs of our heart that come from hearing the, the voice of, of the Lord. From following the teaching and the example of the life of Jesus Christ. Go read the Sermon on the Mount. Go read the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6 and 7. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that as we do, we would hear your voice. We would hear you speaking to us. And you would stir up that faith in us, Lord, that we could live this power-filled life that is a testimony of your glory, of your grace, and of your love. Use us, Lord God, for your purpose, for the holiness, the glory of your name. That's my prayer, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Well, praise God. Till next time, be with us again. Tell somebody else, invite somebody else to come. Admission is free. Love you. Bye bye. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners